Welcome to Football Film Review. I am Michael Spath. We're breaking down the Michigan-Ohio State game. A new guest, Kyle Freilich, former Michigan offensive lineman, substituting in here for Benny Joplin. Here we are, 10-34 to go in the first quarter and a 24-yard pickup for Chris Evans. Kyle, what happened here? Uh, it looks like we ran a little misdirection play here. Started everybody to the left. Uh, got all the defensive eyes thinking we're going to the left and then cut it back. And uh, McEwen gets a great block on his pull back to the right and everybody gets a hat on a hat. And obviously, it's important. It wasn't. They weren't great sustained blocks, but Eddie McDoom, Caesar Ruiz, and Donovan Peoples Jones all getting up to the second level and just giving Chris Evans enough room to run the football. Absolutely. The first really nice pass completion for John Corn after he'd already missed a couple of easy throws. Uh, this at 9:08 of the first quarter and about a 27-yard gain to Zach Gentry. Kyle, you obviously start up front. What did you notice up front before they were able to get this ball off? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good protection for the most part. They uh, double-teamed Bosa there, and he kind of split the defender, or split, split the, uh, I think it was the tackle and the guard, um, and they let him get through into O'Corn's face a little bit, which probably made the pass a little high, but it still got completed. He obviously, I mean, this is a tough throw. Uh, Gentry out there, you know, running just a, a little bit of a seam route. Um, to, good to see him stand in there and take that hit and deliver a perfect pass. Definitely, and uh, like I was saying, um Gentry making that catch while he's getting hit after dropping that pass last week against Wisconsin, so it looks good like that. 5.56 to go in the first quarter. One of the things that you really want to see, Kyle, as the year goes on, is players getting better and better, and Cleek Hudson is one of those players. And Here is a terrific job diagnosing what he's seen in front of them and also making the play. Tell us what happens. Well, uh, you know, a lot of times at the beginning of the year, Michigan was getting beat on the edges, um, and Cleek Hudson recognizes that they're going to hand the ball off here. I think it's to Paris Campbell, and he just darts up the middle, and I don't think Mikey Weber was even ready for him to be right there because you see him bounce off there, and then Kalik makes a great play and gets in there on that tackle and uh, makes a play for a loss. Yeah, it looks like Mikey Weber's going up to the second trying to get Devin Bush, so he's thinking that the tight end is probably picking up Kalik Hudson, uh, and Kalik just the ability to, to push through two guys and still get your hands on the guy shows great strength, great speed, and great instincts. Yeah. 30 seconds left in the first quarter, and uh, Chase Winovich comes up with uh, a big sack on third down here. Uh, gets around his man, shows ter- terrific determination. What stood out to you about this play, Kyle? Um, you know, they had good coverage in the secondary, which is always going to give your defensive line time, and uh, obviously JT Barrett didn't have anyone to go to. They actually had pretty good protection, but like you said, just great effort by Winovich to get around that tackle and, and keep going to get the sack. You're an offensive lineman, so you want to take this guy upfield, and he does that. How does Chase Winovich still get the sack after being taken upfield? Well, as a lineman, you know, you're thinking in your head that you, you've got to maintain that block for, you know, you're thinking a couple seconds, and then hopefully JT Barrett's getting the ball out. But like I said, there's just great coverage, and he had no one to go to, and uh, he wasn't going to run for a first down. So, Kyle, we have one untimed down to end the first quarter, and it's a really interesting play because Michigan kind of ran something similar earlier in the game. They line up just three offensive linemen in the middle of the field. A couple guys are out uh, spread out. Mason Cole and uh, John Bush Bader spread out. And What were they trying to achieve here, and could they have scored a touchdown? It looks like they could have scored if you were watching the play. Uh, It was a a little read option, and both of the receivers that are in the backfield are running out um, like they could catch a pass. If Kugler goes up to the middle linebacker and Ruiz stays on that down lineman, then you're freezing the linebacker with the with the read play, and it looks like we could have had a touchdown right there because people are so spread out. Yeah, and it's interesting because it was a very clever, and like you said, I mean, uh, the defensive players on the outside even bit that they're wide receivers because the wide receivers look like they're about to take screen passes, and so they bit on those, and so you really isolated uh, those four guys in the middle and really three guys. Yep. The first play of the second quarter, Michigan on a goal line, uh, 1457. At this point, they've run the ball 15 times. They've run the ball to Clint Hill on every short yardage situation. And so it's no surprise that the linebackers already bites on the play fake leading to the Sean McCune touchdown. Yeah, it looks like uh, they all have their eyes inside and they're thinking that they're going to hand off to Hill. I mean, like we do quite a bit of the time down there in the red zone or at least uh, inside the five yard line. And they all bite, and Bosa feels like he's going to try to hold on and he misses. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, I mean, they're both linebackers come in and give John Corn a little bit of credit because he had somebody in his face and was able to uh, was able to make the pass that he needed to make even with somebody in his face. Yeah, I mean, he's missed, uh, I believe, three passes that are pretty much wide open already in the game, and he, and he finally, which, you know, 
may have led the linebackers to believe that he might not be able to complete a pass right there, but he ended up making a great throw. This is Ohio State's first touchdown, JT Barrett on a 20-yard keeper. And a little bit of confusion in the Michigan defense. Mike McCray, Tyree Kennel, not on the same page. Mike McCray's not spying the quarterback. What do you think happens here, Kyle? You know, it's hard to tell if they're playing man or, or zone coverage here just because the field is so short. But it looks like they're in man, and McCray either – they were either in quarters and McCray was supposed to pass it off to Kennel, or McCray just read it wrong and missed the tackle. And he obviously the, – the hard part, the confusing part is that he kind of goes with them as a, a underneath receiver that uh, Lavert Hill is on. And so he just doesn't really know where he's supposed to go, and he's not spying Barrett, and Barrett uh, has an easy touchdown. Yeah, I mean, he, it, it looked like he was almost taking on a block when uh, when that receiver came down with Lavert Hill and, and, and that set the screen for uh, Barrett to get in the end zone. An interesting blocking scheme from Michigan up front. Uh, Springs Kron Higdon for a 22-yard run. Yeah, they're uh, blocking down with the tight end and the guard. Um, Mason Cole is just kind of doing a, a skip pull where he's jumping outside and getting on that defensive end and pushing him out. And then Kugler gets around uh, both Bredesen and I believe it's Gentry um, and gets downfield and, and cuts one of those DBs, which is always a hard block. And then uh, Karan Higdon just runs really hard, breaks one tackle, which you're always asking a running back to do. Uh, unfortunately, he steps out of bounds there, and then uh, he puts the hammer on Damon Webb. It looks like with Gentry here, is he is he blocking down? Is it, he just luck out that he's blocking down onto a linebacker, or is he supposed to take this guy? Um, I think that he's looking. I mean, if it comes across your face, you're always going to take it. Um, so he, it could have been a defensive end. It could have been a D end if that guy if he came across too. Um, but you know he he may have been looking for that linebacker, and then the guy came across his face, and then you're taught to take him. Uh, we saw this play, the first play from Michigan offensively in the game. And the first play of the second half for Michigan, kind of a wing T. Uh, you've got two tight end sets. You've got Ben Mason and Henry Poggi. What do you think Michigan's trying to do? Are they trying to go the distance? I mean, what, what is this play designed to do here? Uh, you know, I really kind of think that they're just trying to make sure that they get positive yards on first down and, and maybe get out ahead of the sticks a little bit. Um, you know, make O'Corn a little bit more comfortable in, in what we're doing and, and knowing that, you know, we're going to impose our will on here and then get a few yards and then go from there. We never saw this again, but I wonder if this is supposed to set up something else. Yeah, I mean, I wondered if maybe, you know, it's it's a play-action pass where somebody like Gentry or, or even Wheatley, who, who can run a little bit, uh, gets out when guys are thinking that we're just going to power it through. Last couple of weeks, teams have been running, you know, complex stunts against us and giving us a big-time problem. Here... Uh, Rashawn Gary runs it. Devin Bush gets in there. Why is he so hard to pick up, and uh, how does this, how is this effective for Michigan defensively? Well, Mo Hurst gets a, a good push. Obviously, he's he's great at that, and he's he's taking up two defenders there. And the other thing is Josh UK on the outside, getting so far upfield that he's given Devin Bush uh, an area to get through. But then Rashawn Gary just does, does a great job because Billy Price does get his hands on him, but Rashawn Gary just rips through that and gets gets home for the sack. Lawrence Marshall is in here too, and uh, I think Lawrence Marshall actually gets the attention of both the the center and the left guard. And by the time the center recognizes that uh, Rashawn Gary's coming, it's too late. Oh yeah, I guess that was Lawrence Marshall right there in the middle that did a great job of picking up both of them. Forty-three yard screen pass to Cole Crawford. We haven't seen a lot of this. Mason Cole makes the key block here, and Kyle, why does Michigan use a left tackle to get out there and make this play as opposed to a wide receiver or a tight end? Um, you know, it's it's looking like a little misdirection here again. Um, we're trying to get Ohio State's attention off to to the right, and then Mason Cole just does a great job of slipping out, and uh, he gets a great stab on Denzel Ward, and then gets gets out in front of Jordan Fuller too uh, to spring Kakoa Crawford. How important is it that little fake in order to allow Mason Cole to get the time to get out there? I mean, it's really important because because if he's if they don't bite on that fake, then Mason Cole's going out there, and somebody's following him out there the entire time. Two yards out, Karan Higdon gets in the end zone. Uh, terrific blocking here by McCune, Khalid Hill. Uh, take us through it here, Kyle. Yeah, we're uh, blocking down from the left side, and we're going to pull Ruiz around. Khalid Hill gets a great block kick out. Ruiz gets out to his guy. There's no penetration, so uh, Ruiz gets through uh, cleanly. And then it's just one-on-one with a, with a linebacker and Karan Higdon, and he just runs hard and, and puts the hammer on him and gets home. Well, they always say, I mean, if you're going to – you want to put your running back in a one-on-one situation. Most of the time, he's going to try to elude 
the linebacker here, but when it's uh, two yards from the end zone, he just puts his head down and can uh, can overpower the guy. Yeah, I mean, you're hoping that uh, you're gonna he's coming down hard enough that close. You're not trying to make a guy miss. You're just trying to get uh, get over the end zone. Nine forty to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan down twenty four twenty. Kyle and uh, they throw a fade, uh, a little crisscross with wide receivers and great pass and catch here. Yeah, McDoom does a great job of getting his head around and, and adjusting his body to, to make that catch. What is, um, obviously, the, the, the key starts up front with the, with the pass protection. John O'Corn, we've just seen miss an opportunity. Um, and so when you when you miss an opportunity, what does it take to like come back and just throw the ball up there and, and, hope, and, and, and get your guy to come down with it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a three-step drop. The, the, we got enough protection to, to give O'Corn time to, to get that ball off, and, and you just got to hope that he still has the confidence to get that ball in there. And, and it was one of his better throws on the day. Our final play that we're doing for this football film review is the interception, 2.47 to go. What is John O'Corn, what is the read that's going on here that he's making and his wide receivers are making, and where did it go wrong? Well, the read that they're both making is, is what the safeties are doing, um, and there's safety high, and Kakoa Crawford runs the correct route. Um, you know, If he's in man coverage and the safeties aren't there, then he's, he's going over the top, and that's where O'Corn's throwing it. But the safeties are both there, so O'Corn's, or I mean, excuse me, Kakoa Crawford sits down, and O'Corn proceeds to keep throwing the ball deep. It's just something that, uh, as a fifth-year senior, a guy with a lot of experience, you would not expect that type of that type of read to take place at that point in the game. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, that that's um, it, it. Seems obviously it's easy to say sitting here watching it in replay, but it, it seems like it's a, a pretty easy read to make, especially if, even if you're not looking at Kakoa Crawford. Zach Gentry is is wide open down the middle of the field, and uh, it almost seemed like. John McCorn panicked a little bit.